Jean Guiton, el académico. John Guiton, the French scholar who was a close friend of Pope Paul VI from the time when Paul VI was Cardinal Montini and who was the only layman who participated at the invitation of John XXIII in the preparatory sessions of the Second Vatican Council, wrote, when he saw what was happening after the Council, a book, a small book, Silence on the Essential, published in Spanish in 1988, in which he raised the alarm about the consequences of not speaking out, of keeping silent about the most important basic things of our message, of the Catholic message. For example, he said, among other things, eternal life. Therefore, what we are suffering at this moment in the Church has very ancient roots. I have been thinking about the author and the book, the title of the book and its content this week. This week has seen the consummation of the defiance of a majority part of the Catholic Church in Germany against the authority of the Church. On Monday, the 10th, the blessing of homosexual couples in 109 parishes in Germany took place as planned, as announced. And then on Saturday, the 15th, also as planned, the admission to the Eucharist took place at a Catholic Mass within the framework of the Congress, so-called Christian Unity Day of the Congress for Christian Unity in Germany, which is held every seven or eight years. Both things had been announced, both were explicitly rejected by the Holy See. The blessing of homosexual couples had received a response from the Vatican from the doctrine of the faith, which said that this could not be done, while the other had received a contrary response earlier but on that point. Also from the doctrine of the faith and from the Pontifical Council for Christian Unity. Well, I repeat, the majority sector of the Catholic Church in Germany, the bishops and the laity, who are in the organizing group of the German Synod, have decided that they were going to do it. It is true that the blessing of homosexual couples did receive a refusal from at least the president of the Episcopal Conference. Possibly, I believe, due to a direct and serious intervention on the part of the Vatican. But the same did not happen with the admission to communion of the Lutherans. It has taken place, and in addition, both things have taken place in the midst of a resounding silence. That is why I thought of Guiton's book, Silence on the Essential, because, I repeat, if it is true that the doctrine was saved, and that is already a lot, because the Vatican made it clear that neither of the two things could be done, and that is a lot, okay? I don't want to minimize it, because it is very important. But it is also true that neither of the two things was followed by an explicit rejection and uh, consequences. I can understand that there was a silence on the part of the Holy See about the blessing of homosexuals. And I can understand it for one reason. In itself, it was a relative failure. They had publicized it so much, in the end, 109 parishes, not few. But there are 10,000 parishes in Germany. A 1% and with a participation of couples who came to receive the blessing really scarce in almost all places. I can understand that the Vatican kept silent about this so as not to give publicity and so that they would not become murders in the public opinion. It is very difficult for me to understand the silence when what has been profaned is the Eucharist. It is the body and blood of the Lord. It is the living Christ. 
is Christ himself. And furthermore, the silence, and this is really difficult for me to understand, has not only come from the Holy See, it has been a general and collective silence. There was a small petition respectfully addressed to the Holy Father before the blessings took place, asking him to prevent it. I repeat, a small petition headed by Cardinal Zen and Bishop Snyder. But above the reception of the Eucharist by the Lutherans, there has been nothing, neither before nor after. Not even the usual critiques against the Pope, at least up to this moment, have said a word. It is true that some have spoken out before, saying that this could not be done. But no one has protested, complained, or asked for consequences after this has been done. And as I said, on Saturday in the Church of St. Bartholomew, in Frankfurt, the Catholic Mass was celebrated. And at that Mass, all the Lutherans who wanted to come, Lutherans and those of other Christian denominations, received communion. And that had been announced and encouraged by none other than the President of the German Bishops and by Cardinal Marx, Archbishop of Munich, among others. For me, it is a tremendously painful situation, much more in comparison, at least for me, without any comparison, what happened with the Eucharist than what happened with the blessings, because in the Eucharist there is the Lord. When St. John Henry Newman converted from Anglicanism to Catholicism, he was a prestigious Anglican clergyman, one of the leaders of the so-called Oxford Movement. When he converted, some of his former colleagues mocked him, laughed at him, and told him that by becoming a Catholic he had given up thinking. Newman, with irony and wisdom, answered them by saying that in the Catholic Church, when entering a temple, the gentlemen, the men, are asked to take off their hats, but not their heads. With that, he meant that a Catholic continues to think, he does not renounce to think. He accepts obedience, he accepts that there are things he does not understand. Well, I think that what was allowed in a convert and was applauded should also be allowed in Catholic priests like me. It really hurts me a lot, really. I cannot express how much it hurts me what has happened with the Eucharist. It hurts me a lot. I am suffering. It hurts me a lot. And I do not understand. My heart is suffering and my head does not understand the reason for this silence. It's been a challenge to the Holy Father. His authority has been compromised. They have challenged Him and above all, they have hurt Jesus. It hurts me a lot. It hurts me a lot, and I do not understand. And I think that silence is not good, but I am willing to take off my hat, not my head, but my hat, because perhaps there are reasons that I do not understand. Although I certainly do not understand that there is any reason why Christ in the Eucharist is allowed to be profaned without consequences. In any case, we must continue to pray and trust. Christ our Lord loves the Church infinitely more and without comparison, infinitely more than I do. I have the consolation of having said the last two weeks what was going to happen in Frankfurt on Saturday. And having asked that it not be done, I have the consolation because the words of Jesus also resound in my head and in my heart promising his help when the final hour arrives to those who have defended him before men. See you next week, God willing.